Hi, welcome to Rockdown. I'm Wendy Stapleton. Tonight we're at the Angler's Tavern Hotel in Maribyrnong. We're at the fundraiser for the bushfire appeal. And today we've had amazing acts on. We've had Swanee, Black Feather, and the next person that I'm going to introduce to you, I can honestly say, is probably one of Australia's biggest rock and roll guitar legends. But of course, uh, he wasn't initially Australia's rock and roll legend. He's a Kiwi boy. And my special guest is Mr. Kevin Boric. Hey, Kev. Hi, Wendy. How, How are, are you? I'm good. So you're a Kiwi boy? Kiwi boy, yeah, from a place called Huapai. Huapai, what? Huapai. Huapai. Yeah, it's about uh, 30 kilometres out of uh, Auckland. Okay, so you're in North Island. Yes. Boy. The fish. A fish. Yeah, I used to listen to the radio and hear about how Maui f pulled out the island. It was only there was a South Island, you know. And he, <laughs> he fished the North Island out because it's got Taupo, the heart, Wellington's, the mouth, and the tail goes up. So there's a go. whole story. It's a whole story. story. Yeah, but of course, crystal set. Yeah. well, it's great. Mm. The land of the long... White cloud. White I don't know cloud. how they got white. Every time I go back, it's raining, so I don't know where they got the white from. So you grew up just out of Auckland? Yeah. And uh, your family were musos? They were migrants and um, from Dalmatia, so we got called Dalis. Where's that? Well, it's Croatia now. On the oh, really? On the coast, yeah. Opposite Italy. And um, so they came out and they um, got off there, like my parents' parents came. So, um, so I'm third kind of generation. I've never been back there. Apparently it's beautiful. And um, so, um, yeah, my, they, they got into the f growing fruit. They were sort of um, fruit growers. So, so it was mum and dad? Mum and dad and my sister. You got one sister? Yeah, older. Zorina. No brothers? No. Any musos in the family? Dad or mum? No, I think, or... I think dad's played on the violin, but it was one of those things that, um, you know, in those days you played, you know, they're too busy trying to make a living. <laughs> you know, they were working too much. And I, I think he had the talent, but I think um, it was a bit forced on him. And so there was no players in the, uh, as such uh, from my parents, but apparently dad did have a certificate for violin, not that I ever saw him have one. So when I, when I saw Rock Around the Clock, I just fell in love with Little Richard and Fats Domino and Bill Haley, Chuck Berry, people like that. And, um, and so that's where, the, where I got, I started playing tennis racket. Did you? Yeah, I, I would stand, <laughs> apparently there was- Were you a, good at racket? I was fantastic on the racket. And um, there, was, there was a mirror way over there and a fireplace there, and there was a chair and a, and, a, and a sort of a music machine. And Dad bought this great. He must have sussed that I was in the music, but it was a radio and a and a turntable and a tape recorder, which was big. Deal. That, that yeah. would have been very modern. Oh yeah, and so I would stand on the um, chair with my tennis racket and, and sort of sing along to the records. There was a lamp behind me, so that was kind of. I didn't realise at the time, but I guess I was kind of like you know wishing and hoping or planning my future and I didn't that, even know. I was, was just getting off on it. And I must look at each mum and dad must have looked at each other and said, God, he looks a bit stupid, we better buy him a guitar. So um, So how did you learn the guitar? Um, well that was the thing because mum knew how to do everything. And when I bought they got the guitar home, I says, well, you know, come on mum, show me how to <laughs> play it. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Like that and I was apparently very upset when she didn't know how to play. But she'd do everything for me, you know, they were wonderful parents. And um, so then I got a chord book. And, um, and I, I, I don't know, if I, I had lessons a bit later, but I didn't like them because it was, it was too much like going to school. So you, I'm thinking you're what, 12? Yeah. 13? Yeah, I was probably, well, when I, when I started, yeah, be, because I, st I recorded my first thing when I was 12, so I can remember it being cut straight to acetate, and we all stood around one mic, and we played it, played the songs. And, and that, that was, was it. at 12? Yeah, it was amazing. I um, went to high school, and then get, getting further into the shadows by then, you know, Hank Marvin, and, and um, getting some blues from Auntie Johnny, Ray Charles, and stuff like that. And um, I hooked up with Brett Nielsen and Trevor Wilson at um, Rutherford High School. And we sort of had a, a bit of a go there, you know. We, I, um, I remember having a jam with uh, 
with the music teacher because he was the one that was really good at caning you. But um, when I started playing, and he was playing piano accordion or something, he, he saw a different side of me and it was helped me get along with him better. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, that was the basic of the Lardy Dars was Brett and Trevor and myself. So you actually all met at school. Yeah. So were there any were there record companies in New Zealand that signed you up, or was it all yeah, really well, happening out of Australia? A guy called Red McKelvey, who's a fantastic guitar player, um, who had a, had a um, residency at the um, Platter Rack, and they, he couldn't fill the bill at one time. He knew that we were we had a band sort of in the making by that time. Phil Key had joined as a singer, so we were four piece and. Um, and Red couldn't fill out the night because they wanted you to just play from 8 till 12 downstairs and then you'd have half an hour to get upstairs and play till 6 in the morning. And that was like, well, prostitutes and see merch, merchants <laughs> and all that would go. And so we had that sort of amount of time to sort of play and My drive God, home. God, it was all going on then. And um, it, was, it was great because we just... Um, we were, we were covering stuff. We were a cover band at that stage. This is where people get their technique from. It's playing from seven at was, night until like, six in the morning. It was something like that. And I'm, I'm talking a long hours. Well, you don't get good for nothing. We'll take a short break. Okay. And then after that, we'll go from New Zealand to crossing Australia. over to Australia. Australia. Australia, mate. We'll be back in a minute. Rock down. Welcome back to Rockdown. I'm with my special guest tonight, Kevin Boric. The Lardy Dars. How did yes, you get Lardy Dars? How did you get the name? Uh, well, it's, it's um, it happened at Trevor's place. Um, yeah, right. Blame Trevor. <laughs> yeah, no, it wasn't yeah, him. Think, yeah. No, it wasn't him. It was his mum. Because we <laughs> said we've got to call ourselves the criminals. And we called ourselves the mergers for a while, but that was kind of all murky, you know. <laughs> And, um, Criminals were, has a bit of a ring to it. And we wanted to sort of, we wanted to sort of be tough, you know. So the yeah. criminals, and she went, oh no, 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 you can't have yourself calling the criminals. Why don't you call yourself something like the Lardy Dars? And we all went, oh yuck! You couldn't <laughs> yeah. get anything more How extreme, could you? Could you? Lardy, and, you know, this was before we knew about from the criminals even. to the Lardy Dars. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Please. And then, and then for some reason, as we sort of heard that, and we were trying to think of other names, and you know. Well, and we just thought that that was so stupid that, it was that good. maybe we should use it. And that's what happened. That's so how we got it. stuck with it. So you obviously then decided to follow Max. Yeah, everyone would go, you know, you'd do three-week tour and you've done New Zealand, really. Yeah. And um, we did that a lot. And we, we actually had a hit record called How's the Year Up There, which is a great track. First fuzz box in New Zealand that I mm. used. It was, and it was... Um, it was great, and everyone thought it was the Rolling Stones because Bruce sang it. He sang it very jaggerish, and it's a really good track. So, and we got to number one. Yeah, we had number one, and we had a, we've had a few hits of, over there. But you know, too small. Where do we go? Everyone goes to Australia. It was close. The world was much bigger in those days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where nowadays you go to straight to America where the population is. But no, we went uh, just like as far as it was a long way. You know, cross the ditch as they as they say. But, but we'd go, we'd do a tour, farewell. We'd go over there, we'd blow the money, and you know, in about three weeks, we'd come back. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. back, welcome back, welcome back. Yeah, welcome back concert. And we must have done that, you know, four or five times. And before we got a foothold in in Australia, just by playing live. Yeah, you know? we just worked, and people got to like what we did. You know, we had Bruce by actually Bruce joined us back at the Platter Rack, and we had the keyboards then. So or five piece. Everyone I've spoken to from that particular era, or even you know, when I started recording, we all had to go to England. It was like that was the the holy grail. Yeah, well, we'll get. I don't we'll, know we'll why get, America we'll get, wasn't. Why, why didn't we'll be, we? All... Because, well, because really, uh, when I was in New Zealand, when I was a kid, I, I forgot about this. When the BBC was the thing I used to listen to, because they'd have the live BBC things, you know, and you'd hear the small faces. That's where we got a lot of our material from on the early Lardy does, like Jump Back, um, uh, um, and what's the great, Shake, and, and a few other songs that the um, small faces would love, Steve Marriott, you know. Yeah. And, and, and we'd hear all that and heard Jimi Hendrix, like, you know, on that, you know. 
and um, what, what happened to you when you heard Hendrix? I couldn't believe it. I was in the Shirley or the Galaxy, it changed their names, you know, of these places, and and I heard this song called Stone Free. I'm going to do it tonight, and um, it was just something that I couldn't believe. I heard I'd heard Clapton, and I thought he was great, you know, and we'd all swapped Clapton licks, you know, yeah. all the guys and you know, guitar players and that. And all of a sudden, this, it was like a whirlwind. This Hendrix, the way it was just poor, sexy, and <laughs> all happening, you know. And then you know, I got I got to sort of in my lardy days, I'd have my little do little my Hendrix thing because um, my voice suited that more, you know. So um, that's how I got to hear him. But um, you know, we were we were a sort of cover band of them, but we were trying to write as well. And we were, we had a few singles over there as, as um, in England. No, no, no. We, we actually in England we recorded at Abbey Road. We we were an EMI band in, in Australia. We thought that. Welcome us with open, ar- open arms over there, but they were going, who are you? Yeah, I know, it's and different, like, isn't it? Oh, we, it's not it's quite what like you expect, No, it? they're not, they're, that's the, but EMI, it's like, where, where are you from? That sort of thing. And, they, and then they, we played for them, all our originals, which they hated. <laughs> but they knew that we were good. And they were all a bit laid back, because we, well, there was a bit of hash and stuff over there. <laughs> it's laid, laid back, you know, and we're sort of, and we were into the band at that stage too, you know, the band, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Band, band, we, sort band, of, band. we sort of went through a bit of a bandish thing, and um, material was kind of leaning a bit that way. <laughs> and, um, but they knew we could play, and at that time they would um, get these bands and they'd, they'd say, well, okay, um, that we want to record you. We're going, oh, great. Now, um, which one did you like of our songs? They went, oh, well, no, 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 you're not that. None, no, of, them. No, none yeah, of them. None of them. <laughs> but we've got this new Beatles album, and um, if you pick, you can pick a track off it, and we'll release it before the Beatles release it. Are you serious? Yeah, Marmalade had a band called Marmalade that had a hit. There was a few T- other. There was some producer who got into this thing of doing covers of the Beatles songs and releasing them before the Beatles released them. And the only. The only thing wrong with that was that if the Beatles released the same one later on, um, you know, your one died. And that's what happened to us. We picked Come Together, did a great version of oh, it. I've never heard of that. I've got, I've got the single. No, I, I mean, I've never heard of anyone even suggesting that you would try and record a Beatles song and no. try and get it out before that's they what, got it out. That's how we got to play in Abbey Road. Sat on the same chair as John. <laughs> uh, it was a really good vi- version, though. Maybe we could just get you to sit here and play it again or something. No, you could hear it. I'm not very technologically um, advanced. Oh, yeah? No. You have other means, other ways. I do. Good. My phone bill is very big. I reckon you would have. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to take a short break (laughs) while I work out how to turn this thing off. Oh, yeah, what's that? And then, actually, we. It's the red one's been on. Rock down. I'm with the wonderful Kevin Borich. We're at the Anglers Tavern Hotel and we have been working our little butts off for the fire. Yeah, for the fire, fire um, benefit. Fire benefit. And the tragedy that went on, guys. I know. But we're here. Yeah. That's the thing we've all got to remember. We're here. Um, you were in London the last time I was talking to you and trying to work out this technological buttons, thing that yeah. I've got it all under control now. So no. the lardy does. You did come together, which I want to hear. Yeah. So I'll we'll, work I'll out a way that we'll yeah. get that. Yeah. You came back to Australia. Yeah. Because it all got too hard. Yeah, Trevor stayed there, and it kind of just fell apart over a period of time. You know, it's it's, it's a long, long story to sort of thing. Anyway, it ended up, it ended up as a three-piece band, and every, everyone didn't want to know. Phil, who was the, the great singer of the band, he went and started Band of Light, and so I carried on with the name because no one wanted it. And um, I was going, well, I'm, got a, I'm a family, you know, got a family, so I'll stick with the name and see what happens. And we did Rock and Roll Sandwich um, with Ronnie Peel on bass. Yeah. yeah. And Keith Barber on drums. And that was kind of like my first solo album, really, with the help of, of the boys. And um, that's, that was the last recording of the La Dee La Dee mm. And so then you just decided, this is it, I'm Kevin Borich. Yeah, Renee said, oh, you guys sound like an express train. So we sort of went... Hoover yeah. <laughs> and um, we did Gonna See My Baby Tonight, and that was a, a hit for us. That was a huge hit. That was under the Lady Dove's name, Moran about the Rock and Roll Sandwich Time, and that other album. And um, so, yeah, The Express was born, and um, why we went and doing that. Basically, after that, I mean, just everybody knew Kevin Borridge. I was lucky enough to get on some big shows, like uh, playing with Carlos Santana. 
at Calder Raceway, you know, 60,000 people. Rock Arena. Yeah. I was standing side of stage, I, watching going, oh, wow, this is amazing, all the Latin rhythms are going on. And then towards the end of the set, he's looking over my way and he's going, come on, like this, come and on. I'm going, looking behind me, you know how you do that when you think something, and he's come, you know, and then the roadie come up, come on, he wants you to go on stage. So I went out and played. I think people would be very interested to find out what you're doing now. I know that your son is a wonderful yeah, drum, musician. Yeah, he's, he's playing drums in, in a band called Cog that are doing fantastic. So we're going to come to Melbourne and we're going to go to all the main cities. And um, What will them. it be called? Uh, Boric times Boric. Yeah, that's what's on the sense. cover. Oh, we've got a DVD. I'm oh, sorry. Then, um, we recorded a DVD um, at the basement in Sydney and um, with Harry Bruce on the bass. Oh, I love yeah, Harry. So yeah. it's Boric plus Boric. Harry Bruce plus and who else? Bruce, yeah, plus and Bruce. then a percentage of Leo Sayer got up out of the audience and, he, and with his harmonica. You know, people who love your music just get on to kevinbrights.com.au and they find out where I'm working and I send out a newsletter now and again, so they're all welcome to get on there. And um, that's why I keep in check it out. touch with them and that's how they keep in touch with me. You are a doll, you're a gem. Thank you, gorgeous. Isn't she beautiful? And our, our, our legend, Mr Kevin Boric. Our children growing Look back down on the past Who cares what they say They said it wouldn't last And I'm saved by the blues again want no doctor to give me a shot 
Don't want no TV love line When I'm feeling hot Don't want no miracles, no They'd be wasted on me Just give me a 12 bar of boogie woogie, yeah That's my remedy And I'm saved by the blues 